everybody. Welcome to Around Town with Rotary. My name is Mike Harrington. I'll be one of your co-hosts here today. Hey, everybody, this is a monthly show that we produce. It gives you a chance to take a look at some of the, the interesting men and women of the Beverly Rotary Club, and particularly some of the projects that we work on around the city of Beverly. So uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, I'd also like to introduce my co-host, Al Temkin. Al, take it away. Thank you, Mike. Welcome, everybody. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my fellow Rotarian and a very close friend of mine, I'm proud to say, Thad Samasco. Uh, Thad is a Rotarian. In fact, he's a past president of our club and uh, owns a business here in Beverly, Samasco and Verbridge, a design business. And he's going to tell you a whole lot more about it. So welcome, Thad. Thanks for joining us. Couldn't be happier to be here. Thanks, Al and Mike. So let's, uh, before we get into uh, connection with Rotary and career and everything, let's talk about your, your personal life a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your family, Thad, and uh, what's going on with them. Well, um, as you know, I'm married to the famous local attorney, Miranda Gooding, whose new name is now Miranda Samasco. And I live in Beverly, a proud member of Ward 2. Uh, near, I live near Dane Street Beach. I have uh, two daughters grown daughters who have uh, given me two beautiful new grandsons and uh, Miranda's two bonus daughters uh, uh, are kicking around in my life as well. Uh, terrific, terrific, terrific. Yes, and I know your wife well, and she is, uh, why she would have said I do to you, I'm not exactly sure, but clearly she's a very intelligent woman, so she must have had her reasons for that. Go figure. Go figure, exactly right. So where did you grow up then? I grew up in Worcester, um, quite near the downtown, uh, a somewhat tough neighborhood, uh, but rich with experiences, uh, quite different than Beverly for sure. Yeah, and when did, when did you get to the point, yeah, I would say it is very different from Beverly, I, I would agree with that. Um, when did you get to the point where you knew you wanted to be an architect? Pretty early on, I was probably 12, maybe 13 just fascinated by watching the construction that was going on. And at the time, uh, the Brady Bunch was a popular show and Mike Brady was an architect uh, who was somebody you'd always want to be like. Oh, interesting. interesting. I like it. Hey, tell us a little bit, um, what kind of education is required to become an architect? Can you describe um, some of your educational stops along the way? Sure. Um, after graduating a, a public high school in Worcester, I got I ended up with basically three three degrees. First was in, in engineering, uh, and then one in architecture, masters of architecture, and then finally a masters in business administration. Um, to be an architect, uh, you need a five or six year degree in architecture. Architecture school is not a lot of fun. There's not a lot of time for partying, unfortunately, but uh, tough programs, but you learn a lot and then you do a multiple year uh, apprenticeship after that. So Thad, you mentioned your MBA. I mean, not only are you an architect, but you're a local business owner and uh, somewhat of a general practitioner. So not only are you doing the work, but you've built a firm and, and that type of thing. But what are some of the, the attributes of being a local architect slash business owner practitioner? Yeah, Mike, I think it's um, architecture is a great profession because you can specialize things if you're an artistic person or technical or have a sort of a business interest. You know, there's marketing and HR and even CAD system stuff. But when you're a general practitioner, you, you got to do a little bit of all of that um, and have to be competent in, in, in all aspects of that. So that's where actually my educational experience does come in handy. You'll find some architects will partner with other architects who have maybe a different skill set to, to end up with the with the full package. Very good. Thad, how did you end up in Beverly coming from Worcester? An excellent question, Al. Um, I was working in Boston and started looking for a house and was oriented toward the west of the city, toward the toward the Worcester area. And I, when I found myself all the way out in Framingham. Uh, realizing that I would still have this hour commute, I said, well, I think I'm going to go look for a place that's on the water. I mean, I just come from Michigan. I missed the sea. I got a commuter rail map and uh, looked at, and I saw that Beverly had all these stops. So I drove up to Beverly. Very first time I was in the city of Beverly, I bought a house uh, that day. <laughs> wow. That's decision, amazing. Mike. I don't, I don't think that's very common at all. That's amazing. I had no idea about Beverly other than the house pretty much sat on the train tracks and I could afford it. 
Oh, that's awesome. Well, we're lucky to have you. Um, and what is it that keeps you here? What, uh, besides your business, obviously, what, what is it that attracts you to this area? Well, I think like everybody, I've developed friendships with a lot of like-minded people. At, in the beginning, most were relatively new to the area who, like me, saw the potential to make a, a great place even better. You know, the schools and the parks and the downtown. Um, I'm you know, hung around with a guy like Paul Breon, who was the editor of the Times, Beverly Times at the time. And we just, you know, I think the transportation network, the history, the beauty of the Gold Coast. And then once the girls arrived, you wanted them to have a hometown they could be proud of and grow to love. And, I, you know, I'm completely invested now in Beverly with my home and uh, business and real estate investments here. And honestly, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Awesome. 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 Thank you for that. Hey, Thad, give us a quick snapshot of just the growth of your company, how you launched it, how you grew it over time, maybe some of the types of projects that you take on. Sure. Um, back in 1987, um, <clears throat> I had a brand new baby in the house and, and had a few moonlighting jobs that added up to about three or four months worth of income. I always wanted to start my own firm, originally thinking it would just be me. And, and like Mike Brady, I'd have Carol and Alice the maid. I'd be working from home. <laughs> Uh, but it's grown a little past that. Um, the growth's been pretty steady. Um, been in North Beverly pretty much all, the whole time. Um, you know, there's always been, there were always some corrections that happened during a recession. The worst was in 89 and 1990, you know, tough times. I ended up relatively new business, ended up doing home inspections and basically all you, all you could do to keep the lights, the lights on. And it's just grown. We started out just doing, you know, Mrs. O'Leary's one car garage and she would refer us to Mrs. Brown and give us a two car garage and then a cave and then a dormer. Next thing you know, we're doing very large homes uh, and, and then, you know, larger buildings. We currently have about 45 people in the offices. We have one in Chatham as well as the one in Beverly. We still do a lot of very special residential work, new and renovation works, usually pretty custom work fitted to the owner and the site. And we do a lot of multifamily or mixed use projects, a lot of institutional work, uh, churches, colleges, nonprofits. Uh, we have a full interiors group that does everything from tile selection to furniture to window treatments. We tend to stay close to home with the two offices, um, but we have done work all over New England, a little bit in New York, Florida, uh, even uh, a little bit in London and, and in fact, one small project in Saudi Arabia. I see. So Thad, a little later in the program, we're actually going to show the viewers at home uh, visual examples of some of the projects you've worked worked on. But just as you reflect back on your long successful career being an architect here locally, what are some signature uh, projects perhaps that you've worked on that maybe the average person driving through Beverly might be familiar with? Well, I think certainly um, the McKay School and now the Briscoe School stand out. Uh, the Sterling Y is a big project that that we added that recent addition to, and we did the teen center there and, and the early ed center there. The Montserrat dorm, uh, some dorms have done in Endicott probably would, would be known. Uh, proud of the work we've done for bootstraps in the new headquarters, Harbor Lighthouse. Most of those new buildings, apartment buildings on Rantoul Street we've done. Um, and the Cabot Theater restoration we've been a big part of. And there are a lot of residential projects you know, that you don't necessarily know. Uh, some of them are off the, the, the private driveways. Um, and those, those, that's a probably, you know, a pretty good mix of, of what we've done. It's, those are the Beverly projects. And again, there's, there's some, you know, centered on the North Shore, but also a little bit of everywhere else. Perfect. Super, thank you. And before we go to break, I, I also just want to add for any of our viewers that are tuning in here today, um, Thad and his firm have done uh, a couple of projects here at my home and are now working on a third project that's going to start in a couple of weeks. And um, quite honestly, I, I, you know, working with you and your firm has really been exciting because you guys are in the game. You know what you're doing, you ask the right questions, and you're easy to get in touch with. And every single person, Thad, and I think I've said this to you, that has come into my, house, into my home that you've sent in for the various reasons you've sent them, have been extremely helpful to us because neither one of us have a creative bone in our body, as you well know. So, um, so we appreciate it very, very much. Well, well, thanks for that. I think, you know, our basic mainstay has been just 
do what you say you're going to do and do the right thing, even if it's, if it's hard. And so most of our work is referral and repeat and, you know, in the high nineties, a re repeat referral work. So that's a, that's nice. Nice to hear that Al. Thank you. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you so much. And with that, we're going to take a very quick break. Uh, please uh, tune into the very quick video you're about to see to learn more about what uh, some of the great things that the Beverly Rotary Club does. We'll be back in a minute. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They help buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage Ice Cream Social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. Welcome back, everybody. And... Um, Thad, talk to us a little bit about, you've just mentioned several of the projects that you've been involved with. Uh, you're going to show us a bunch of pictures and things in a little bit. But a lot of these projects, I suspect, you're in front of planning boards and city councils and uh, town administrators and all of these people. Tell us about some of the, some of the pushback and the feedback that you get and, and how you kind of deal with that as you're walking through a project or getting a project off the ground. Sure. Um... But we do get some pushback once in a while on the private owner side. You know, I think the best projects we do have a, an owner who really does have a lot of input and is, wants to be involved and really and really cares because um, it is custom and you, you, you got to customize for, for the person. Um, the process requires them ultimately to take a leap of faith um, that the finished project that, that we see in our heads will function well, will be buildable and will look great. <laughs> Our clients tend to be successful in their own fields and sometimes find it a little hard to take, you know, that leap with their, with their architect. Um, on the public side, it's, it's probably harder for projects that have a public approval process when there's pushback because there really isn't time to explain all of the background and the thinking that went into the design and, you know, the hours of thinking and, and back and forth with the client. And of course, the, you know, the functional, uh, rather the financial viability of a project that's isn't usually a concern of the public. It's, it, it's easy to say, make it smaller. And, you know, honestly, sometimes it would be better if it was smaller, but the smaller project may not be financially viable. So it's, so it's hard not to have the, the time to explain that. Interesting. Interesting. Let's kind of uh, detour here a little bit. We, we've, we focus on your career and all the great work that you do. Let's talk about Rotary. Um, and tell us if you would, Thad, what brought you to Rotary and, and, um, why are you, why is it something that's important to you? Happy to. Yeah, um, I was, uh, you know, not really connected fully to the community. Um, and I was looking for an organized way to give back. And when you're on your own, it's a little different. So I, I, I talked to Paul Briand, uh, who was a member, and he said, you know, you should come to Rotary. That's a good way to, to get involved. So I, I did that and sure enough, it opened up all kinds of avenues to volunteer and help out in the community. Awesome. And again, you, you kind of brought yourself right up to the presidency. Why was it important for you to get involved in a, in a leadership a leadership role? Well, I think everybody needs to, to step up and, and, and do their part in turn. The, the club is great, but it needs, it needs a continuous infusion of energy and, and leadership. Um, to, to survive and to thrive. And so I felt it was my turn and, and, and jumped in. And did a great job, I might add. Hey, Thad, as you reflect back on your year as president, what are some of the, the things you're most proud of? Every president kind of has their own agenda or priorities. 
Uh, anything come to mind when you think about that year? Well, I'd say the first thing is nobody quit. Nobody left. So <laughs> that was that was one good part. Uh, I got Larry Herman to rejoin, which is really an important oh, part. Goodness. Um, mostly, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is we all we all pitched in uh, my year and, and Brian Murphy's year after me to buy the uh, bootstraps group, uh, a refrigerated truck so they could deliver some fresh, fresher food to those in need. Uh, and then all of the other things that the club does year after year, the scholarships, the international work, you know, just keeping that going uh, is, is a pretty big job. Uh, we did launch the golf tournament uh, in my year. That was sort of a new initiative for the club to look for ways to, to raise some funds. Awesome. So we're well aware of the, your time, effort, and energy that you put into, our, into the Rotary Club. What are some of the other things that you're involved with? Well, the biggest thing is probably the Cabot. Um, I was one of the founders of the Cabot and saw, basically I'm a big fan of the downtown. I think any place you want that's worth living in needs to have a vibrant downtown. And clearly the Cabot has become a big part of what keeps the, the downtown alive, especially on the weekend evenings. Uh, so uh, our firm has been able to volunteer our services to help restore the theater over now, I think three or four phases of work and four or five more on, on their way. So that's the biggest thing. I was involved uh, on the board at, in uh, on Beverly Main Streets, and I've done my time here and there in different uh, organizations over the years. Uh, but most, most now, mostly it's the Cabot that's got uh, most of my focus. Yeah, you're being quite humble too, which is one of your qualities. Uh, it's important for people to know that you are one of the founding people that, to keep the Cabot in downtown Beverly before the renovation and all of the other work started. And um, I. Sure, I speak on behalf of everybody in Beverly and saying thank you for that work because we need to have the cap at downtown. So that's terrific. Hey, Thad, can you um, pull up a few pictures for us and show us some of the work you've done and kind of explain uh, some of the stuff to our viewers? Sure, I'd be happy to. Let me share my screen here. Can you all see the Cabot Lodge there on the, in the screen? Yep. yep. Yeah, so this is a fun project because, you know, I bought my kids bikes at Brown's Bike Shop and then to turn it into this cool little place for folks to stay, you know, ties again into my love for, for Beverly's Main Street. Um, and if you if you go to an event at the Cabot and you've had a little too much fun, you can you can stay here overnight. Hmm. Then, of course, the Cabot itself is a photo wall was in progress. I mean, beautiful, beautiful interior. Uh, and our work has been to make it safe and comfortable and, and, and really bring the community to get together into the building. Including the little bar we did out front, um, which is a very fun little project for us to do. We sort of did this sort of backstage idea with the exposed ductwork and the lighting trusses and the exposed wall. This wall is the same kind of wall that is in back of the stage, uh, if you get ever got back there. Big project for us in the community is adding this floor to the top of the of the Cabot Y and re renovating the, the two floors below it into, into some really good quality housing, which now comes with some small kitchens for the residents who live uh, in the building. As I mentioned earlier, you know, I've done a fair bit of work on uh, Rantoul Street. I used to live on Broadway and come down to Rantoul. It was not as I didn't think quite all that it could be. And I think it's I think it's successful in terms of where it is relative to the train station. These buildings, residents are very happy in, uh, and uh, I think it's done a lot for the, for the lower part of our downtown. This is the one at 131 Rantoul, uh, where Enfuego is. Hmm. And coming up to be built um, at the site of the Casa de Luca and that whole block is the, what they call Depot 2, which is this brand new building consisted of multiple parts. And if you get off the train to come into Beverly, this is what you'll be seeing when you take a look off to the right. So really cleaning up that block and tying together all the other work that was done up and down uh, around Tool Street. And even small projects are fun. This is that we've done, I think two or three breweries uh, in Beverly in one form or another. This is channel marker, kind of a neat, not kind of a neat interior. As I mentioned earlier, the McKay School was, was quite rewarding. Our neighbors really appreciated it. Uh, I think one of the teachers in one of these schoolrooms actually rented a unit in her schoolroom and we mm -hmm. added it off to the back. Nice way to save the building 
that's iconic, but we also were able to add a lot to the landscape that, that hadn't really been tended to over the years. And we're in the middle of the Briscoe project, uh, renovating the school into senior uh, housing and some artists live work studios and preserving that really great auditorium in it. So this, you know, there's a lot going on. This is, you know, just local Beverly. Out back, the seniors will have a place to, to hang out, uh, do some gardening and barbecue and so forth behind the old uh, gymnasium. And then a little further up the hill at the intersection of, of Tozer and Sawyer Road is this anchor point is family housing, affordable family housing, Harbor Lake Community Partners again, great support from the city in producing, this is a 30 nine unit building and there's a 38 unit building coming with it uh, all for family housing all just across the street from up the hill from the high school and then bootstraps we cleaned up the building they're in and added an addition uh, for the ever expanding and, and needed programs uh, Sue Gabriel was a joy to work with as was her team and then a whole new, whole new face on the Y it's hard to believe this is the same building the four and afters are pretty dramatic um, Sure. Really well, well embraced and well used by the community, putting a new face, a new face on that old older building. And up north, if you get up to uh, Gloucester, we're really proud of the new Cape Ann Y. This is moving the Y out of downtown Gloucester, a little cramped and hard to find, right smack dab after the second rotary near the uh, whole uh, the uh, the Moulis Market up there. Brand new YMCA for the folks up in Cape Ann. And the Pete Frady's dorm for Endicott is one of the projects we've done for Endicott over the years, new dormitory um, named for Pete. And I really always love the project we did fairly early on for Montserrat. This is their dormitory, utilizing these forms that were familiar to the neighborhood, but also with a modern, a modern tweak. And then the, you know, Henry Bertillon's the old Johnson tree farm, cleaning up the barn and, and helping him work on his landscape. And, you know, he's a big donor to the community, both to the cabin as well as, you know, donating the money he earns from these Christmas tree sales to the various nonprofits in the area. And then we have done these houses. Um, little, this is off of Payne Avenue, um, <clears throat> brand new house emulating a shingle style house that had been there years earlier that had burned down. And we get to do, you know, some really interesting detailing, right? Stuff that's kind of one of a kind that suits, this happens to be the drop off at the front door, kind of like similar to your house, Al, but just a, maybe just a little, <laughs> not quite as pretentious. <laughs> and that same site had this great old carriage house. This is where they kept, the, apparently they kept the good horses. Um, there was a barn out back where they kept the lesser quality horses, but the good horses apparently got to stay in this beautiful stone stone building. So that's kind of the work. Um, you have done some modern houses and stuff selling on the beach in, in Beverly Farms. Um, and again, one, one of a kind things, generally this house was cited to, to look up and down the coast, up toward Marble, or down toward Marblehead and up toward Manchester. And we got this kind of neat, neat view to it. Hmm. And another one, uh, another farm's house that's a little more modest in scale, but really gives us a chance to look at traditional materials like stone and shingle and, and true divided light windows and, and, and combine that with landscape and interiors. And, you know, we think about these houses as you approach them at night, if you're coming to it as a guest or during the day, coming in and out with your groceries, that whole gambit of, of family life gets considered as we put one of these together. So that's a view of generally a scan of the Beverly projects. As I mentioned, there's some in other in other towns and other states, but this is this is kind of the core of the Beverly work. Well, boy, that is some really impressive, cool stuff. Um, I think anyone that lives in Beverly that drives around the city can see all over the place all these really cool projects you've worked on. And I think Beverly, by and large, is so much of a more pretty, attractive city as a result of a lot of your work. So, you know, thank you so much, Dad. Um, sure, can you tell thanks. me, has has COVID slowed you down at all, or no big deal, or? Oddly enough, uh, it hasn't. Um, as you know, folks who are on the residential side, folks are home and they're realizing their houses, you know, that things they might have left fallow, they've decided they need now and they need it right away. <clears throat> so we've gotten a fair bit of work in the, in the residential, single family residential world. Housing shortage is really acute in all parts of housing. So the apartment mixed use 
projects are, are coming in very strong and they rent right up. Um, they get occupied immediately and there's plenty of those uh, on, the, on the way. Um, we, we had, of course, everyone was working remotely. We were concerned maybe there would be some down shift in efficiency. It turned out the efficiency, if anything, went up a little bit. Um, so it's all, it's all full speed ahead. We're, we're lucky. We feel very blessed. We understand there are folks in industries, uh, service industries, you know, hospitality and so forth that, that are suffering and hurting. And we, we try to do all we can to, to get back where we can. But on our side, on the construction side of the world, it's, um, it's full speed ahead. Good deal. Hey, Thad, if somebody at home wanted to reach out to you or learn more about your company, where could they find you? Uh, website's probably best. It's uh, www.svdesign.com. And there's an information link there. And there's also a bunch of uh, information, photographs of the work and, and similar kind of projects they might be interested in, in taking a peek at. Terrific. Hey, well, listen, thank you so much for being our guest here today. This has been a fascinating 30 minutes and it's gone by really quickly, but boy, what a, what a lot of great projects you've had the, the privilege of working on. And uh, it, it's been a fascinating 30 minutes to spend with you. So thank you so much for being here. Um, sure, we sir. are celebrating our 100th year here with Beverly Rotary Club. And throughout the year, you'll, you'll see a lot of information around the town. There's already a, a banner downtown describing our 100th year, but we have all kinds of fun celebrations and activities to, to celebrate that 100th year. So we'd invite you folks to, to learn about those activities and participate. But, but Thad, Thad Tomasco, thanks so much for being our guest here today. As usual, Al Temkin, great to have you here as my sidekick. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody really soon. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Matt.